Myself, Dr. Rashmi Saxena. I am Professor Chemistry and I am working in Government MH College of Home Science and Science, Jatapur. The topic I am going to take up is Nuclear Magnetic Resonance Spectroscopy. The prerequisite for this topic is the student should have a knowledge of spectroscopic techniques. After the completion of this module, students will know about the electromagnetic radiation and their characteristics, classical method of molecular structure elucidation and what are its disadvantages. Then they will also know about the spectroscopic techniques of molecular structure elucidation and its advantages. In the year 1666, Sir Isaac Newton carried out an experiment. He placed a prism in front of his window from where white light was coming and he reflected this white light through the prism on a wall and he saw that white light splits up into seven colors and these colors are violet, indigo, blue, green, yellow, orange and red. At that time other scientists objected that it is the prism which is giving color to white light and light does not consist of seven colors. To prove his point, Sir Isaac Newton placed another prism in front, in front of seven colors that is the whip gear, and the prism was placed in inverted manner and he showed that the seven colors when reflected through the inverted prism they produce white light in then in this manner he showed that the white light consists of seven colors and it is not the prism which is providing color to the light and this is the first scientific study of the spectroscopy now what is spectroscopy Spectroscopy involves the study of interaction of matter with electromagnetic radiation. When matter is irradiated with electromagnetic radiation, it shows the absorption of appropriate electromagnetic radiation. And after the absorption of electromagnetic radiation, the amount of energy taken up is used for different type of transitions. We study the transitions and the study of transition gives us information regarding the structure of molecule and other characteristics. The electromagnetic spectrum includes all types of electromagnetic radiations. On the basis of characteristics of this, these electromagnetic radiations, the complete electromagnetic spectrum is divided into different parts. It is gamma rays, x-rays, ultraviolet radiations, visible radiation, infrared radiations, microwave radiations and radio frequency radiations. Human eye can see only the small part of this electromagnetic spectrum and that is the visible radiation which constitutes the white light. And this white light consists of seven colors. These are Vibgyo, violet, indigo, blue, green, yellow, orange, and red. The visible part extends from 400 nanometer to roughly 800 nanometer. Now, if you remember that always the danger marks are represented by red color. Why? because the wavelength of the red color is very large as compared to the uh, violet, blue or green light which we cannot see from a distance but red color has got a longer wavelength so we are able to see the red color from a long distance. That's why danger mark is always put in red color. The Wavelength is long, energy is low, wavelength is short, energy is high. 
so people have misconception that red color has got high energy whereas it is the violet or uh, the indigo color which has got a high energy as compared to red color now the application of spectroscopy spectroscopy has got various application in the field of medicine forensic science pharmacy pharmacy industry and qualitative and quantitative analysis structure elucidation of organic compound our first area will be structure elucidation of organic compound and once students are thorough with application of spectroscopy for the structure elucidation then they can switch over to the pharmacy forensic science qualitative and quantitative analysis are in the field of medicine so the study of structure elucidation by spectroscopic techniques is a very important part of chemistry structure elucidation means the process of determining the chemical structure of a compound it is important to confirm the structure of a compound during the chemical research or the product development chemical structure elucidation of impurities is also very important in case of agrochemicals pharmaceutical and new chemical entities before 1960 classical methods based on chemical reactions were used for establishment of the reaction of the structure these methods were very tedious and time consuming for the molecular structure elucidation the compound has to be present in pure state for example if you wish to establish the structure of chlorophyll a which is one of the component of green pigment present in plants the chlorophyll a cannot be obtained directly from the plant it is the green pigment which will be extracted from the plant after the extraction of the green pigment it is subjected to isolation procedure where chlorophyll a chlorophyll b and beta carotene are separated nowadays chromatographic techniques are used for the separation and after the separation the compound is purified and crystallized once we get the purified compound crystalline compound it is subjected to elemental analysis elemental analysis is of two type qualitative elemental analysis and quantitative elemental analysis qualitative elemental analysis tells us what kind of elements are present in the compound and quantitative elemental analysis tells us in what ratio these elements are present in the compound for example we have taken one compound which is a hydrocarbon that is it consists of only carbon and hydrogen and the ratio of carbon and hydrogen is cnh2n the formula comes out to be empirical formula comes out to be say c7h14 this is the empirical formula and it can be c14 and h28 to know the exact molecular formula we should know the molecular mass and at that period determination of molecular mass was very difficult only cryoscopic methods were available these methods are depression of freezing point and elevation of boiling point another method was vapor density method but on the basis of these experiments we cannot arrive at the exact molecular mass of the compound so it was a very tedious and difficult process after the determination of empirical formula and their molecular mass functional groups are determined chemical methods are used for the determination of functional groups as we use in our labs also 
during the practicals. Now, it was very difficult at that time to establish a stereo structure of natural products. So, it was the chemical method to establish the structure was very tedious and time consuming. We should admire and respect the achievements of the scientists of that period. They worked with simple glassware, valence, Bunsen burner, thermometer, and very few simple chemicals. Kekulé established the structure of benzene. Liebel and Wonthoff established the tetrahedral nature of carbon. Emil Fischer worked on carbohydrate. He used very simple chemicals like bromine water, dilute nitric acid, phenyl hydrazine, and he established the structure of all the carbohydrates. He worked for 35 years on carbohydrates. After the development of spectroscopic methods during the period 1930 and 1960, things are dramatically changed. Ultraviolet and visible spectroscopy. The ultraviolet region extends from 190 to 400 nanometer. This is a region where most of the experiments are carried out. Visible region extends from 400 to 800 nanometer. Ultraviolet and visible radiations possess sufficient amount of energy to bring about electronic transitions in the molecule. Various types of electronic transitions are, pres are indicated in this chart. It is sigma to sigma star, pi to pi star, n to sigma star, and n to pi star. We see the energy difference between different transitions. Actually, as per the selection rule, the transition takes place from HOMO to LUMO. HOMO means highest occupied molecular orbital and LUMO means lowest unoccupied molecular orbital. For example, in pi to pi star transition, pi is HOMO and pi star is LUMO. Now, every compound shows at a particular wavelength maximum absorption and that wavelength is known as the lambda max. Now we take one example of acetone. In acetone, we see two lambda max. One lambda max is at 195 nanometer. Another lambda max is at 274 nanometer. The lambda max at 195 corresponds to pi to pi star transition because it is a high energy transition and lambda max at 274 corresponds to n to pi star transition. From this chart of transition, it is very clear the energy gap between HOMO and LUMO in case of pi to pi star is more as compared to the energy gap between n to pi star transition and to pi star energy level. So, this low energy transition corresponds to n to pi star transition. Another example is of isoprene. In isoprene, there is only double bonds. Two double bonds, they are present in conjugation and the lambda max is shown at 222 nanometer. The lambda max for the pi to pi star transition in case of acetone was observed at 195 whereas in isoprene it is observed at 222 nanometer. Why there is a difference? Because in isoprene the two double bonds are present in conjugation. We will see later on that as the conjugation increases the lambda max is shifted towards the longer wavelength. In nature, we see beautiful colored flowers, colored vegetables, and so many colored things. Why these compounds or why these materials are colored? Definitely like a tomato, which is red in colored because of the presence of lycopene chemical compound. 
This lycopene, as the structure shows, contains 13 conjugated double bond single bond. There is only pi bonds, therefore, this compound will show only pi to pi star transition. And the, with the extended conjugation, the energy gap between highest occupied molecular orbital, that is the pi, and lowest unoccupied molecular orbital, that is the pi star, is reduced. And lycopene shows the absorption in the visible region and its lambda max is 505 nanometer. Another compound is beta carotene, which is present in carrots and some other yellow orange vegetables. Beta carotene also contains 11 alternate double bond and single bond, and the lambda max is 475 nanometer. So, with the extended conjugation in any compound, it will show the electronic transition in the visible region and it will be colored. Beta carotene, initially it is green, and col green in color and on when it is dried, it changes its color from yellow, orange to brown color. So it is by the oxidation of the compound present in, B in beta carotene, it changes its color. Infrared spectroscopy. The name is infrared spectroscopy because here we use infrared radiation. The wor working range is from 2.5 micron to 25 micron. In infrared spectroscopy, usually we mention radiation in terms of wave number, it is from 4000 centimeter inverse to 400 centimeter inverse. When compound is irradiated with infrared radiation, it can bring about vibrational changes. Rotational changes require less energy than the vibrational changes. So when we give infrared radiation to the molecule, along with the vibration transition, rotational modes also change. So therefore, we call it vibrational rotational spectroscopy. This is showing the stretching of two bonds symmetrical and anti-symmetrical stretch. These are the various vibrational levels of the molecule. This infrared spectroscopy is very useful for identifying. Infrared spectroscopy gives us information regarding the functional group. Earlier, the detection of functional group was based on the chemical method, but those chemical tests were not very accurate. But the infrared spectroscopy gives us very confirmed information. Every bond, say bond between O and H, will have a specific frequency. Hydrogen O and H bond, when it is bonded by hydrogen bonding, then its frequency is changed. So free OH has got a specific frequency of 3600 centimeter inverse, whereas OH bond, when it is associated by hydrogen bonding, shifts towards 3300 to 2700 centimeter inverse. Similarly, C double bond O frequency is 1715 centimeter inverse. Likewise, we have a chart in which the frequency of every functional group is given. So from this, we can identify the functional group present in the compound by its IR spectrum. For example, this spectrum has got a broad band here at 3400 centimeter inverse, 33-3400 centimeter inverse. This is a broadband and this is the position for which shows us the presence of hydroxyl group. This hydroxyl group 
is bonded showing the hydrogen bonding how we can say it is showing the hydrogen bonding because the frequency is shifted towards a lower frequency and it is broad here so this contains this compound contains hydroxyl group so all the alcohols will show this oh band now from this spectra we can also indicate whether the hydrogen bonding is intramolecular hydrogen bonding or intermolecular hydrogen bonding by intermolecular hydrogen bonding association of the molecule takes place and the band becomes broad in case of intramolecular hydrogen bonding this band will be towards the higher frequency and it will not be a broad band another thing which can, which is different in intramolecular and intermolecular hydrogen bonding compound is on dilution if the position of this oh band is changed then it will represent that compound contains intermolecular hydrogen bonding and if on change of concentration the position of oh band does not change then it is indicative of that the hydrogen bonding present in the molecule is intramolecular hydrogen bonding another example is the carbonyl c double bond o it is a very sharp band which we see in ir spectrum in ir spectrum if the in a functional group there is there is a strong fluctuating dipole moment then the band will be very very sharp we know that carbon and oxygen they have different electronegativities and there is a strong fluctuating dipole moment and therefore we get a very strong band because of the c double bond o functional group and there are several organic compounds which contains c double bond o functional group so if we can say that if a band at 17 15 cm inverse round about 17 50 cm inverse is absent then definitely that compound does not contain carbonyl group now you can imagine how many compounds in organic chemistry contains carbonyl group aldehyde ketone esters amide acids acyl halides all these compounds contain carbonyl group so if this band is missing then you can say these compounds are not present this this spectra cannot be of these particular compound so it is very easy here to identify functional group by ir spectroscopy by this example we will appreciate the importance of spectroscopic techniques it took 28 years to establish the structure of cholesterol scientists worked for 28 years from 1900 to 1928 what was the problem they was not able to establish the structure or the size of ring a whether the ring a is five membered cyclic structure or it is a six membered cyclic structure now with the help of spectroscopic techniques it is very easy to establish whether the ring size is five member or it is a six member in this by spectroscopic technique what we do we can oxidize this hydroxyl group to a keto group and a keto group when it is present in six member cyclic structure shows the absorption band at 17 15 cm inverse if it would have been in a five member cyclic structure 
then the CO stretching frequency or the band will be seen at 1735 centimeter inverse. Now it is so easy. But it took 28 years by using chemical methods to establish that the cholesterol contains ring A, which is a six membered cyclic structure, and ring A is not a five membered cyclic structure. Another interesting example is of camphor. Again, there was a problem to establish what is the nature of this oxygen present in the camphor. Classical studies took 60 years to establish the nature of this oxygen and establish the structure of exact structure of camphor. So with IR now it is very easy what is the functional group of oxygen and since this shows the absorption band at 1735 centimeter inverse then we can assure that oxygen present in camphor is carbonyl not any other functional group. So by these examples we appreciate the importance of spectroscopic techniques that these techniques are not very tedious and these techniques are very accurate and simple and less efforts are required to perform these techniques. Another spectroscopic technique is nuclear magnetic resonance. Here we use the electromagnetic radiation of radio frequency region usually from 60 megahertz to 700 megahertz or more. If the instrument is more sensitive, it can be of greater radio frequency region. Now in the transition, there are certain nuclei for which the nuclear magnetic quantum number is greater than zero and they have the different magnetic properties and we, on the basis of this, we study the NMR. Like a proton and carbon-13, NMR give us the information regarding what type of protons are present in the molecule, what is the electronic environment around the proton, or what type of carbon are present in the molecule, and what is the electronic environment around the carbon. So a lot of information is gathered by NMR. So this is a very useful technique and we will study it in detail. If you wish to really see the molecule, there is X-ray crystallography by which you can see exactly the picture of the molecule. This is the picture of snowflakes hexagonal symmetry of water molecules taken by X-ray X -ray crystallography. Mass spectrometry, it is not mass spectroscopy because here the compound is not irradiated with electromagnetic radiation, but it is bombarded with electrons of high energy, energy of the magnitude of 70 electron volts. When compound in the vapor state is bombarded with high energy electrons. One of the electron is knocked out from the molecule and it gives the molecular ion peak. In the mass spectrometry, the mass spectrum is the graph between mass by charge value against the relative abundance of ions. So the position of the molecular ion peak shows the molecular mass of the compound. For example, this compound CH2Cl2, the molecular ion peak is seen as 84. So 84 is the molecular mass of this compound. There is another peak at 86 and 88. That is the molecular ion peak is M. 86 P's peak is M plus 2 peak and 88 peak is M plus 4 peak. This gives us a lot of information. By looking at 
this mass spectrum, we can say that this compound contains chlorine and contains two chlorine atoms. By the classical method, it is very difficult to establish the presence of chlorine and the number of chlorine atoms present in the molecule. It is a tedious procedure, but with the spectroscopic techniques, it is very easy. This peak at M by E86 indicates that one chlorine is of mass 35 and another isotope is 37. In peak 88, both the chlorines are isotopic mass 37. So, this indicates that the other two chlorine are present. Another indication is the ratio of M peak M plus 2 peak and M plus 4 peak. The ratio indicates that two chlorine atoms are present in the compound. So, by all these four spectroscopic techniques, ultraviolet visible spectroscopy, IR spectroscopy, NMR spectroscopy, and mass spectrometry, now it becomes very easy to elucidate the structure of organic compound. Spectrometers are required for recording the spectra. So the spectrometers used for record ultraviolet visible, IR, NMR, there, there is a difference between the setup, but they are common feature. Every spectrometer will have a source of radiation it will have a sample holder to permit the efficient radiation of the sample. Then there will be a frequency analyzer which separates out all the individual frequencies generated by the source. A detector to measure the intensity of the radiation of each frequency. Then recorder. So the spectrometers, they have certain common features and they have basically some different features also. Now, for the further reading, you can consult Organic Spectroscopy by William Kemp. Another book is by Introduction to Spectroscopy by Pavia, Lefman and Chris. These are very good books and if you study these books, you will gain a lot of knowledge and I will tell one thing here that Spectroscopic techniques are very, very important. If you go for some interview and you answer all the spectroscopic questions and along with the spectroscopic techniques, if you are thorough with the chromatographic techniques, you will be picked up by any industry because these two things are very much used in industries. So with this, my lecture, I conclude my lecture.